Well, hello there, beautiful humans, and welcome to the video. Please pardon all the equipment noise. I'm back at that school where I found the, the uh, sterling silver ring last fall, the time I forgot my camera. So I have my camera now, and it looks like they're digging up the road in front of the school. So it's a bit noisy. I hope that won't affect the quality of the video too much. This school was built, I believe, in the late 50s or early 1960s. A friend of mine went to school here. I asked her if she lost anything she couldn't recall. So I'm just going to swing around and see what happens. Talk to you soon at the first interesting signal. How very appropriate. My first signal is a pencil end. I haven't even done one swath yet and I'm getting a repeating signal in the 60s. So what do you think, beautiful humans? Is it a Canadian copper penny? Let's see, shall we? This ground is rock hard. I'll have to check it again with the detector. There it goes. Yes, it is, my friends. It is the first point of the day. A somewhat messy live dig. And I can't see for shoot because of all the glare. Let me get my glasses off. It is indeed a Canadian copper penny from 1981. And there is our beautiful queen. I'm very pleased with that. I'm going to continue. It's plenty warm out here today, and I'm glad of it. I saw the edge of this, just a crescent. It gave me a slamming overload signal. I think it's a pipe that uh, a sign used to stick in. Anyway, I'm not moving that. I thought I was chasing a pull tab, but I'm glad to be mistaken. It's a 1974 quarter. And in perfectly spendable condition, I might add. This was a good mid-tone signal, about 46, so I thought I might have another quarter, but it's not quite as exciting. It's a big chunk of old conduit. Here's another penny signal. <laughs> Somewhere. This soil is really kind of clay-like and on top it's quite hard. I'll just have a little dig and see what we can find. See, once I'm under the surface, this, the signal is quite loud. Some roots here. than it suggested. That probably means it's not a coin. It's probably something bigger. Oh, I've got it out. Hmm. 
Ooh, is that a coin? By golly, it is. It's another quarter, my friends. What are the chances that I would find two 1974 quarters in a space about 10 feet by 20? <laughs> I'm excited by that. Let's move along. Good day to you, Mom. Could this be a coin spill? There's my plug, where the quarter came out of. And I've got a very interesting signal right here. Right there. And the pinpointer recognizes it right off the shot. If I had just dug a bigger plug, I probably would have found this too. Let's see what it is. Yeah, that was the shovel. Oh, come on now, where are you? Oh, there it is. Oh, and it's a penny. Boy, that's a sweet green color. I can't really tell what this is. I think it's fallen afoul to the fertilizer. Let me switch off and I'll see what I can find out. I don't know if you can see the date there, but I was able to determine that it's a 1969. And as West Country Clegg would say, this site is much worse, sir. 1969 penny. 69.74, yeah, that makes total sense with the age of this building. Give you an idea of the architecture. Look at the size of this tree. Here's another of these pipes. I know now what they are. It's not for a sign. It was for a fence. That's right here at the front of the school. And it's exactly in line with the other one. I'm not going to be able to get that out of there, nor do I want to. This was a strange bouncy signal. I thought I was after another pencil end, but it's in fact a 1986 nickel. You really have to dig all the beeps. Down in the States, there's the luxury of knowing what's a coin and what's garbage, but up here in Canada, our coins sound really trashy. I'm glad to have our very red nickel. This was my lovely, loud, mid-60s signal again. It's a 1984 copper penny. With the second portrait of Queen Elizabeth. There we are. Lovely, lovely. I don't think the schoolyard has been hit before. I haven't found anything more recent than 1980s. And these coins actually ring up sounding like something, so I think if a detectorist had been here, these coins wouldn't be here, especially those quarters. Hmm. I'm not complaining. This little thing sounded exactly like another one of those quarters. It was ringing up about 46, quite solidly. And when I first thought, saw it, I thought it was the uh, top of a valve stem for a bicycle, but it isn't. It's solid on the bottom. And it's quite weighty for the size of it. I, I have no idea. Is it some kind of little weight for a balance scale? If you know, please comment below. 
I turned down my sensitivity so I could get close to the bike rack, so I'm here within about nine inches of it, and I found a pencil sharpener. What's neat is, I think it's a plastic pencil sharpener, and it zoomed in just on the blade, which is pretty amazing. I'll clean it up better when I get home. I finally broke the 1990s. This is a 1990 penny with the third portrait of Queen. Still a copper penny. I haven't found a single zinc. I'd like to keep it that way. It took some really tricky pinpointing here around the bike racks. But what I did was I turned my pinpointer this way away from the bike racks and it found the target. This might be my first zinc penny. It rang up at between 46 and 51, which would make sense. I can't see a date because it's really crusty. I can't even tell which portrait of the queen it is. It just doesn't feel like a zinc to me and it doesn't have any nibbles around the edge, so that's surprising. I'll give it a soak in something when I get home and see if I can come up with a date. It's a penny though, but I had to dig. I got five inches down, in through roots, for a stinky zinky. Huh. Oh, there, I dropped it. That's about what it's worth. This rang up like a modern coin. It isn't. I don't know what it is. This looks like another penny signal, so let's try digging it live and see if I'm right. Spot. Pinpointer likes it. It's right by this little plantain. I'm digging with my off hand here, folks, so pardon the clumsiness. Well, that's a pretty powerful signal. Well, what the heck is that? That is not a Canadian copper penny. Oh ho, I see what it is. It's part of one of those twisty combination locks for a bike. Well, that makes sense. I'm right by the bike racks. Huh. Somebody broke their lock. Four, five, six. That's kind of cool. All right, well, that fooled me. That rang up so sweetly, just like a penny. On to the next. This rang up awfully low for a copper penny, but it says 1995. I think copper was still being used until 1996, but I'm going to have to look that up. It was bouncing all over. It was 64 in one direction, 46 in the other. Maybe it was just on edge. This signal I almost didn't dig, it sounded so stupid. And it sounded stupid because it was a wonderful 1980s model dime and with a piece of trash.
it's looking very nice indeed. I'm very glad to have that coin. On to the next. Here's my first pull tab. I got so used to the mid 40s signals being quarters that I was kind of surprised when it turned out to be what I should have expected. <laughs> this is a very unhappy ante because I had a really beautiful coin signal. It turned out to be my bet noir. Here it is. The dreaded juice jar seal. Boo! Here's a little surface find. It's a mod in dime with a rust spot right under the shrubbery. I can't read the date right now because some perspiration just dripped into my eye and it's stinging like a beast. Maybe you can see the date. Whew. It's really hot. It's the 22nd of May, but oh my goodness, it just feels like July. I'm not complaining, but I'm really thirsty, so I'm back at my car for a little bit of refreshment, and then I'll go back out. I think what I'll do then, I'll turn around and show you. I think what I'll do then is this strip here beside the school building, because there's a bit of shade there between the school and the trees. So that might save my weary bones a little. But for now, I'm going to have a drink of fresh, refreshing water. I don't quite know what to make of this. It looks like a cap of some kind. This was a pretty crazy bouncy signal and I ended up with a drag racer and a strange little piece of bling. which looks rather tribal. It looks like the drag racer caught a wall. He's missing his front tire. <laughs> My husband will like that. I'll take that home and clean it up. Here's my first bottle cap for a nameless yellow beverage. There's surprisingly little trash here. I'm grateful for the, uh, the ratio of coins to garbage. This was a super bouncy signal that ended up around 56. I think it might be a tag off clothing. It looks like some kind of like outdoor triumphant guy. It might be completely off, but uh, that's kind of cute. I like that. Glad I dug it. I have absolutely no idea what this is. If you can give me any assistance, please comment. Look at the greenness of that. If we were in the United States, I'd say that was an Indian head penny. <laughs> I'm going to get a little brush off and see what we've got here. That is a 1987 Canadian copper penny. Look at the color. That must have fallen afoul to the fertilizer. Cool, another copper penny. Let's go on. about a yard away from it is a 1969 nickel. That nickel's 50 years old. It looks great. The newer one was so red. This one still looks spendable. You can see all the plugs I was digging. They're all within about the space of a dining room table. And I've got another coin. This one's a 1979 copper penny. 
I have a feeling this is the area where the children stand to get the bus. And they lose all their pocket change. This looks to me like a little squashed ring. No copper ring. I'll try to unbend it when I get home. It's got a little design on it. See, cut in. Hmm. Jewelry. This was a much bouncier signal than warranted by a Canadian copper penny, but as you see, it's a 1978, and it's in very nice condition. I attribute the bounciness to being so close to the bike rack. This was another jiggly, bouncy signal that I thought would turn out to be a nickel at best. But my goodness, it's a tiny stirrup. A little stirrup. <laughs> I have a stirrup on my bucket list, but I kind of thought it would be a full size. This one looks like it's from a toy horse. I love it. This was a very messy signal for a 1983 copper penny, but there's a lot of trash in this area just by the front of the school. As soon as I went into the shade, I started to find foil and canslaw and trash. But there's a copper penny. I'll take it. I'm almost done. I'm heading back to the car now. Hello there, beautiful humans, and welcome to the roundup of my hunt at the elementary school. This was the school that was built in the uh, late 1950s, I believe, or early 1960s. I like hunting schoolyards because there's such a variety of things in it. I mean, lots and lots of trash, but some of it's kind of interesting trash. So I'll inflict the trash upon you now, the, the core of packaging tape. I have no idea what this is. I haven't been to a candy store in decades, so I presume this is some kind of, you know, tasty powder or liquid that would be slurped up through that little nozzle. It's cute. Found a balloon. Lots of candy wrappers, including Despicable Me. Don't know what that is. Random piece of plastic, a drinking straw, a little bit of yarn. Lots of bottle caps, two hair ties, a little bead. Don't know what that is. I thought this was an eraser, but it broke a part of my hands, and I think it's chalk got red all over me. The Velcro strap from probably from somebody's cuff. It looks like it was ripped off a ski jacket or maybe a, a backpack or something. Foil. This isn't all the foil. I gave up on it, including my very unfavorite jar lid, jar seal thing, which always frustrates and fools me. One bottle cap, nameless, zipper pull, little iron clip, a big iron thing with a nail stuck through it. I don't know what that was for. It was to connect something to something else. That's the technical term. A couple of washers, random bits of iron, a piece of chain, a very ratty paper clip. This, I don't know what it is. This big chunk of pipe. It feels like it has concrete in the middle of it. I tried to dig that out and it's not yielding at all. So. I have no idea. Old cable conduit. That pulled apart like a slinky. I kind of squashed it back together, but I wasn't able to get it completely back to normal. Random piece of aluminum strapping of some kind. Two little aluminum rods, one straight, one bent, a couple of pull tabs, random chunks of aluminum, probably off windows or cladding of some kind. One can, that uh, wasn't too far into the surface. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased at how, how um, untrashy, is that a word, the schoolyard was. I didn't find a lot of can slaw, I found some. This is some kind of cap for something. I really don't know, it's not iron, it might be brass. 
It doesn't stick to the magnet at all. It looks like it's got age on it. I, I really don't know what that would be. This is another piece of this aluminum stuff, and it's got a gizmo for attaching it to something, which is all bent down. They see it's got these ears here. It would have hooked in. It looks like these would have hooked into the opposite number of this on the next piece. Am I dreaming? This isn't rough, so this isn't broken. This is the end of a run. This is broken, obviously. But it wasn't until I was cleaning it up that I saw something written on it. It says Murray. Uh, that doesn't get me any further, but I'm going to uh, do a bit of research. It also has this nifty logo with the interlocking rings or the loops or the spring or whatever it is with an arrow coming through it. So I'll look that up, and if I find anything, I'll post something up here. It wouldn't be a schoolyard hunt without a pencil end. And this one still has the eraser on it, although it would not rub out anything out now. It's very, very hard. And the pencil is just about compost. And here's the sharpener that's probably about the same age. It is metal. I thought it might be plastic. It's metal. But it's some freaky kind of pot metal. It's all white and crumbly. And the blade is completely gone. So that's been under the ground for a while. I think I have one of these, and it wasn't mine. It was my brother or sister's. So that's probably from the mid-60s, I'm guessing. This is part of a combination lock. You know the cylindrical ones? It's got the little lump where you line them all up and the key goes in and then you, or the, the other end goes in and then you twist these around to confuse the world. So somebody broke their bike lock. Found that right by the bike racks. This is the brass aerator for a kitchen faucet. My little toy stirrup. I am so ridiculously pleased with this. You can see it was plated at one time. You see the little glint going on. And you can also see here where the metal is broken. There would have been a ring across here. to hold a strap, which would have held it to the little saddle. And obviously the pot metal that it's made of was not very strong and it got wrenched away. <laughs> my first stirrup, I can actually tick that off my bucket list now or maybe upgrade it now that I want to find a full size stirrup. This thing has me beat. It was chromed. It's got a screw there that goes part way through. It's got a pivot here. It's some kind of latch or something. This L-shaped part would have swung out this way. And this, I think, has a thread. Is it? Yep, this has a thread. So this would have screwed into something. And then this, I think might be threaded. I'm not certain. It looks like it is. So something else would have gone into that. And then this whole assembly would have swung apart. This would go that way and this would go this way. But other than that, I cannot imagine what that would be used for. Help me. Let me know. Comment below. I guessed right in the field. This is a weight for a balance scale. I don't know if I can show it to you. I don't know if I can focus on it here. 
it says 5G. And I weighed it on my jewelry scale and it is exactly 5 grams. So that's what that is. This is neat. This little, I called him, I think, the outdoors triumphant guy. But when I washed it, the back went these awesome colors. This was all just sort of dirt color. Naturally, it was full of dirt. I'm really super pleased with that little medallion. That's really neat. Don't know what it's from. Again, I'll research, the, see if this is a logo for something. And if so, I'll put something up here for you to read. This nifty little dragster. I thought it was pretty pared down. Well, it is. It's only the bottom. It's just the chassis. It's a Hot Wheels 1977 from Malaysia. And it's what they call a funny car. Originally, there would have been a body that sat on top and linked onto this somehow. There's a broken bit here that would have held this body down and it hinged open. So I think if you pushed on the back of it, the front would pop up. And this poor fellow's lost one of his wheels. But I know my hubby will be thrilled with that nonetheless. Look, is that a fire extinguisher in there? <laughs> How cool is that? So Hot Wheels 1977 funny car, and this was in the hole with it, and I didn't know if that went on the front. It does. It doesn't. So this is a piece of rather aggressive looking bling. It looks rather alien to me. Do I have it right side up? Okay, well that looks more like it. <laughs> I thought it was some kind of like spider creature with mandibles. But actually it looks more like a kind of bear creature with horns. That doesn't actually make me feel a lot more confident. That's still a pretty ugly looking guy. Anyway, there he was in with the funny car. I'll set him on there for now. And I have coins. Oh, wait, wait, wait. A little ring. I was able to straighten it out somewhat. It was mashed completely flat, as you recall. So I got at it with the handle of my wooden spoon. And I managed to get it almost round. It's a child's ring. I think it's aluminum. It's extremely light. And the, the carved out pattern, as you see, is the silvery color. So I think this would have been aluminum with a cladding on it. And then they've cut through it to make the design. All right, on to the coins now. I got pennies, copper pennies, 69. You'll have to take my word for it because it's very, very crusty. Very crusty indeed. You can just see the leaves and you can kind of see in the right light, you can kind of see the, the six and the nine before it goes out of focus. 1978, 79, 81, 83, 84, 87, 1990, 1995. And then the stinky zinky, which I have no idea. I can't get a date off it. These other pennies, I mean, they're, they're dirty. This one's very corroded. This one's corroded. This one's got gunk on it. But, you know, these could be cleaned up. And if we still spent pennies, those could easily be spent. This one, no. This one is good for nothing but making a fish scale on my collage, which I will do. A 69 nickel, which looks just fine. And an 86 nickel, which doesn't. Man, look at the redness. 
It looks like an old buffalo nickel from the States. It's not that old. It shouldn't look that bad. Two dimes. 1981 and a 2018. So the second portrait of the queen and the fourth portrait of the queen and the poor queen is looking through a rusty haze because our new coins are rubbish. And I found two 1974 quarters. What are the chances of that? And they were not far from each other, so I don't know whether they were a pocket spill from one person or whether it was just a monumental coincidence. But except for a little toning, they look just fine to me. So there you have it, my friends, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, well, 90 cents. 90 cents, that's not a bad haul. I'm not really doing this to retire on, <laughs> although there's always hope. Anyway, if you can tell me what this goofy thing is, please do. And I think I'll put my stirrup in the sanctuary for abandoned toys. Okay, my friends, thanks for coming along to this hunt, and I hope to see you very soon. Here's Auntie waving goodbye. Toodaloo!